Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Annie. This is my book collection and it is May, which means April wrap up time. I am so excited. It is my first monthly wrap up. It's crazy when I think about it. You gotta finish reading for the month, make the video, edit the video and post it if you wanna be timely. Um, anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. My last couple of videos, I realized that there was some noise picking up um, from when I moved my, my shirt because I talk with my hands a lot. So I'm hoping that I got the microphone right this time. We'll see. Okay, to get started with, I'm just gonna start, I have like the piles of books on the floor, so this is not in any order of like date read, like rating, anything like that. I just, I'm gonna pick up the books that I see. So um, first is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I got that from the library. I really liked this book. I liked Lillian, our main character. I liked her voice. Um, it was told in per first person point of view and she just cracked me up. She had such a funny way of looking at things, um, but she's also was relatable. Like she wasn't just like crazy. She was relatable and real as well. Um, this is a story that has found family, a little bit of magical realism, um, some humor, um, and it's really not that long of a book. I think it's like 250 pages. I will definitely be reading more by Kevin Wilson, but what I love so much about it, I feel like, is Lillian. So I'm kind of curious if the other characters he writes, if they'll be distinct from Lillian, but still as enjoyable. Because I wouldn't like to read a book that's like the same character just with a different name. <laughs> but I also love Lillian. So I'm curious. I'm curious what else I'll get from Kevin Wilson. Um, I don't remember what I rated this. In fact, all of these books that I'm talking about, I'm just going to be rating them off the top of my head because I don't remember what I rated them. So this is like rating them based off how I feel about them today. Um, I would say this is a four stars. Maybe four and a half, but I really, really liked this one. To me, four stars is really good. A five star would be like a perfect, not a perfect book, but like a book that just blew me away. And a four star is like, it didn't blow me away, but I really, really enjoyed it. So four stars. Next up, I think this is the only nonfiction book that I have for the month of April, Rising Strong by Brene Brown. I think this is the third Brene Brown book I've read. I really like Brene Brown and the things that she has to say. I listened to it on audiobook. Yeah, I feel like if you like nonfiction, Brene Brown really knows what she's talking about and I really like, I think that her research has changed the way that I think about shame, which is what she researches, and belonging and other stuff. Oh, wholeheartedness. I do feel like though, I don't know that each of her books, like you learn that much new. <laughs> like I feel like a lot of it is kind of, I felt like learning the same things, but it's good to have the reminder. So that's why I've read three of her books because I feel like every year or so it's like, I need the reminder. So I'll probably read more by Brene Brown. I would give this a three and a half stars. Next we have, I don't actually know how to say this author's name. I'll say it twice. <laughs> that way I can try to do different things. Sherry Lapena, Sherry Lapina. I don't know. A Stranger in the House. This wasn't my favorite book, <laughs> um, but also thriller is not my main genre. I'm don't, I'm very rarely, maybe never going to rate a thriller five stars. Um, I just really like books where there's more of a hopeful ending than thrillers usually have. This one, all of the characters drove me insane and it felt too long. I just like cut down being like, okay, pick up the pace. I don't need to hear any more about this investigation. I didn't really like the way a mental health topic was handled. I feel like it was treated like a twist and I didn't really like that. I think I originally rated this three stars, but that's because I feel very bad about relating, rating things lower than three. <laughs> I might rate this now thinking back on it like two stars. Next we have, I read all of the currently released books in the Nevermore series. This is a middle grade fantasy series about a girl named Morgan Crow who goes to a magical world where she gets to go to a magical school and find out that she's like really special. <laughs> so it's kind of like Harry Potter 
But that makes it sound like it's like a ripoff of Harry Potter, but I thought it was really uniquely its own. It didn't feel like a ripoff of Harry Potter. It gave me, it gave me a lot of the same feelings that Harry Potter did. And I liked that, like a lot of the similar atmosphere, similar themes. I would recommend for sure this series, There's Nevermore. Um, Wondersmith is book number two and Hollowpox is book number three. Um, and the fourth one, I think Silverborn it's called, is coming out this fall and I am so excited. I thought it was a completed series when I started reading it and I'm really happy that there's a fourth one coming out. I don't have any idea how many is projected to be in the series, but at least four. If you're a Harry Potter fan, I would say give this one a try. Next up we have the first two books in the Harry Potter series. I have already read these. This is just a reread. Um, I actually listened on audiobook and the only copies that I have are um, these illustrated editions um, by Jim K. They are gorgeous if you don't have the illustrated editions. I need to get the regular copies. I used to probably have like two or three copies of each book in the series, but I left them at my parents' house and they got rid of them. So I need to rebuild my Harry Potter collection because I love Harry Potter and I wanna pass it on to my son when he gets a little older and I want it around for myself to look at and reread. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about Harry Potter. I think I forgot to give my rating to Nevermore series. I think I rated those all like four and a half stars, maybe four, four and a half stars. They're really good. Harry Potter, five stars. Part of that's probably nostalgia. I love these books. Um, clearly, I'm like in a middle grade fantasy mood because I read a lot of middle grade fantasy this month, but yeah, reading Nevermore made me want to read Harry Potter. So we got that. Next, The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. This one was recommended to me for like my 12 books, recommended by 12 friends and 12 months challenge that's over on Instagram. This is probably the one that I've liked the least out of all of those <laughs> that I've read so far. Or actually, I think Stranger in a House that I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago is one. So that might be the worst. This one was interesting. Um, it's about a girl who is in space, and she, I don't really know how much to tell without being spoilery, but I thought it was interesting, like, sort of the exploration of what it would be like to live alone in a spaceship. The pacing fell off. Um, the beginning took a really long time, and then the kind of, like, climax in the end was really rushed feeling to me. And then also the thing that felt strange to me is, like, there's kind of, like, a twist partway through that really changes like the tone and even the genre of the book and um, to me that seems like it would change the audience of the book I don't know that seemed strange to me so I don't know I didn't love it but I didn't hate it I'll give it three stars next we have the house is on fire by Rachel Beanland um, this book was fire pardon the pun but it was so good. I've never read anything by her before. Um, also, I like have not been in the mood for historical fiction. Like I just like I'm just every time I think about reading historical fiction, I'm kind of like, Ugh. but this one um, it was sent to me by Simon and Schuster, and so I wanted to read it um, to review it, and I'm so glad that I did. It was so good. We have four points of view in it, and. The chapters are short, like three or four pages each, and like the action like is just like it goes, 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 goes. Like it's like one of those books that like the momentum is just constantly going. There's constantly something happening. And I loved the short chapters because I was interested in all of the points of view. And like I always wanted to get back to the next point of view. And it was great to have the short chapters to move on. Um, it's about a theater that caught fire in 1811 in Richmond, Virginia. It's based on a true story. The author researched the characters and the setting and everything. Like, it was so well-researched. I've heard that the audiobook of this is, like, a full-cast audiobook, and I think I will reread it so that I can listen to the audiobook because I've heard it's really good. But this one, five stars. Here we have Bomb Shelter by um, Mary Laura Philpot. I had never heard of her before, so I don't even know why I requested this one from Simon & Schuster. Um, she considers herself an anxious optimist, which a natural warrior with a stubborn sense of good cheer. I think that's why I chose it, because um, I was like, I feel like I'm an anxious optimist. <laughs> I feel like, yes, yeah, she was 
very anxious. She gave me lots of ideas of things that I should be anxious about that I'm not already anxious about. I feel like it also like drew out, and this is like a me thing, but like a, like I wanted to like trauma compare. I don't know. That's just not how I want to feel reading a book. I think other people probably wouldn't feel like that reading this book, but that's how I felt. So I think if I am going to give it a stars, I would give it three stars, but try it for yourself because I think there's a lot of good things in this book. I just, I didn't like the way it made me feel. And then we have A Golden Fury by Samantha Coho. This is a book that my sister recommended to me. It is a historical fantasy young adult book. It was really good. It took me a little while to get into it. The first, like, I don't really remember, like 50 pages or so. I was not wanting to continue, but this was an instance where I was like, just give it 100 pages, and if you still want to quit, you can quit. And I, I did give it 100 pages and it did start to pick up and I ended up really enjoying it and I will read, I think this author has at least one other book, so I will read that book by her as well. If you want a young adult um, historical fantasy, I would totally recommend this one. It's set at the beginning of the French Revolution, the first parts in France, and then they move over to London. It has to do with um, alchemy and like the Philosopher's Stone and we have a strong female man character and kind of like a little bit of a love story. I really liked it. The tagline, is it science or magic? Power or possession? Golden Fury. I don't know if I just said the rating for a Golden Fury. I think that I would give that one four stars. We have This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. I read a lot of time travel books I feel like lately. This time tomorrow, I liked it. I don't think I loved it. I feel like it had the potential for it in me to love it. It had a lot of things that I would normally like in a book with the magical realism and the father-daughter relationship and sort of like a self-discovery, looking at like what matters in life kind of theme. One thing that was strange to me is like she had like completely like no regard for what her going back in time was doing to everyone else's life. It's like it would change everybody else's life, like kind of like back to the future kind of thing. People would be like unborn. Like like they were like like living children, like she would come back and they'd be like not there anymore. It felt weird to me that like that was like barely even discussed as being something that she worried about, if I remember correctly. So that was like kind of like a turn off to me. But I liked it. I don't know that I'll be like rushing out to read more by Emma Straub, but I liked it. I would say four stars, 3.99. Then we have Recursion. This is like another, this is like so interesting because I read Recursion and this time tomorrow back to back and they're both time traveling kind of stories. Obviously time travel, an author makes the rules for their own universe. They can handle it however they want, but it was just really interesting to read Recursion and this time tomorrow back to back because the ways that the author handled time travel were so different. I liked Recursion a lot. This is probably my favorite Blake Crouch book that I've read. Blake Crouch isn't my absolute favorite author. I think that he writes really interesting stories in the sense that like he comes up with really interesting ideas and setups and he clearly has like a science mind and like it's all very believable and interesting. I don't love his writing style though. I feel like I have a hard time connecting to his characters and I think the pacing feels off to me. But this one is probably my favorite Blake Crouch book. If you were going to pick one to read, I would pick Recursion. Dark Matter was good too. I, I mean, I did like it, so I don't want to like say like I didn't like it. I think I would give it a four stars, maybe four and a half. And then the last book that I have to talk about, Part of Your World. This is the first book I've read by her. It was so good. I'm really picky about romance books and I don't love spice. Like I don't love open door romance, but this one, it was open door. So I'll let you know. But it didn't make me feel super uncomfortable, which like I feel like that's how I feel when I read Open Door. I thought it was going to be about like a Little Mermaid retelling. It might have been, I guess. The main character had red hair. I don't, I don't feel like it was really like strongly Little Mermaid retelling if that's what it is. There was kind of like a small town romance element. There was age gap trope, friends with benefits. It was, it was really good. I liked the way that it was written. I liked all of the other things that were going on in the story besides the romance, which I think is something that's important to me in a romance book is that there's a strong plot outside of just the romance happening. The family dynamics that the main character had were 
well, really both the main characters, both of their family dynamics, were really interesting, and I liked seeing the characters work through that. And this is actually the first dual point of view romance that I have liked. Usually I find male points of view really cringy in romance books, but I didn't this time. That's no hate to people who love the dual point of view because I know a lot of people do. I just personally feel uncomfortable when I read them. So anyway, I loved this one, four stars. So that's April. I read 15 books this month. Let's see, let's do a quick three favorites. Um, definitely The House is on Fire. Mm, it's so hard to remember what I've read this month. I really liked Nevermore. And let's say, I'm not going to count Harry Potter since it's a reread. So we'll do this. Nothing to see here. Those were my top three of the month, if you wanted to know. So that's what I read in April. If you liked this video, like, subscribe, comment. I hope you have a great day. My name is Annie, and I am so happy that you're here, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye!